Hi, welcome back to the Box of Delights. We're playing Duel of Ages 2. It's round 4, I'm about to kick off with the white team. We start with the free action phase, and you can see that we've got Kit Carson and Jade the Unicorn, who I'm told reliably is a male, I kept calling her she. So Jade, he the Unicorn, can, during the free actions phase, if we've got two characters in the same space, they can trade items. So Jade is going to give his... Magnificent War Horse that's been accompanying across the arena to Kit. We don't have any ranged op weapons still, so we'll move past fire into the move phase. Definitely the Titanium Renegade, our cyborg here, wants to have a cracker at Bruno Brincelli. Doesn't have any weapons, but he's pretty tough to take down, so we could do some damage here if we're um, if we're lucky. Let's have um, the Tenium Renegade with his speed of 4. Head over here. 1, 2, 3, 4. Bruno's pretty slow witted. He's only got a wits of 2, so we might have Annie come join the, the fray as well. She has a movement of 6. Whereas Arden Glynn with his speed of 6, well, he's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He's going to take. Take himself beyond the swamps, still worrying about his wounds. I just thought actually for the black player, he's probably might have been better putting Devon down here. Because with his pistol, he could have been taking some opportunity fire against these white characters as they moved. But, alright, we'll leave it for now. And hopefully we'll show you opportunity fire on a, on a later turn. Boris here, he has a speed of 6. I think we'll head him over here to back up Kiri's silver tip. One, two, three, four, five, six. And Kiri with her speed of, of six. Well let's head in and do the the war path again. One, two, three, and we've got to end on our team marker instead. As for Grok, he has a speed of six. He needs to go weapon hunting, really, I think. I think we'll move him in here and see if we can't take out this Guardian. Grok's strength is really high. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, and we can get in there next time. Kit Carson here. He has a movement of seven. That's his speed. But he has the horse now. He has this magnificent war horse. Owner gets plus one hit and plus one react for melee purposes only, so he's mounted and a bit more ferocious. While riding, he cannot enter buildings. Um, but he's also got this symbol, which matches Kit's symbol. If you have a matching symbol, then you get the bonus, so that's plus one speed. Now the horse itself was only going to give him 7 speed, which he's got anyway, but it, at least it takes him up to 8 because of the bonus. And in addition, if you match a symbol here, you don't have to worry about the, the strength and intelligence requirements down here, which is 6 and 2, which Kit would not have made because he's only got 5 strength. But with the symbol, he's fine, he's, he's, he's a good horseman. So he's got 7 speed. He can move through woods, swamps and water with just a cost of one. And I think we'll have him head into the colonial labyrinth because, I don't know, let's take a chance. Let's take a chance on hitting that guardian again. Uh, we can move one through woods, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go for glory. All right, I think we've just got, is it just Jade left now? He has a speed of eight. And Jade's going to do his duty by using that 8 speed to cross over here and back these guys up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Once more, there's no opportunity fire. Let's sort out this melee. And we have three characters involved. We've got Bruno, we've got the Titanium Renegade, and Annie. Annie has wits 5. The Titanium Renegade has wits 4, so it's not looking good, but Bruno on his mountain bike only has wits 2. So Bruno 
gets to strike last. Annie's going first. She has five wits, so that's for the highest. And she's going to reveal a item. This cavalry saber she was carrying. It's got a strength requirement of four, intelligence two, which she just manages to pass for five. And this she doesn't have any shared icons with it, but it's going to replace her power and damage stats. So if she hits, it's still using her inherent melee value of only three, but instead of one, she'll have six power, and instead of two damage, she'll do three damage. All right. So with this saber, this nice sword, her hits are going to be a little bit more deadly. Bruno's got four react, so with melee versus react, defender is better by one. Let's see if we can pull out a hit. We grab a challenge card. Defender is better by one. It's a miss, and he's missed. And that could prove costly. Okay, and he's taken a swing. No joy. Now the Titanium Renegade. His natural melee versus Bruno's react is good. Attacker's better by two. Six versus four. What do we get? Attacker's better by two. That's a hit. So now it's power versus armor. Seven versus two. Attacker is better by five. This could be brutal. It's this one here. Attacker is better by three to seven. Oh, plus zero. Okay. Not too good after all. And the Renegade's damage is two. So that's two wounds on Bruno. He's got a health of six, but now he's going to have a chance to strike back. And I think he's going to have a crack at Annie, not the Renegade. So he has a natural melee of six, but he's got an ability here that says he gains two melee hit against targets that have a worse strength rating than Bruno. And his strength is four, Bruno's is eight. But Bruno is able to use his brute strength to overwhelm Annie in his attack. It's going to be 6 melee versus uh, 4 react. But of course, with his plus 2, that means attacker is better by 4. Let's grab a challenge card. Attacker is better by 4 is a hit, of course. And now it's power versus armor, 4 versus 2. Attacker is better by 2. And we get attacker is better by two, a plus zero. That's lucky for Annie. But Bruno's power is still three. She's only got four health, so that's three wounds. And he was fortunate there, I feel. And Bruno has not been overwhelmed. Now we move into the adventure phase. And let's have a look at Kit's adventure first. Kit's up against this Guardian once more on the glory path this time. So it's a strength 7 challenge. We know that Kit's strength is 5, but he has a plus 1 because he's in the same colonial age. But that's it. Let's draw a card. Defender's better by 1. And it says, yeah, we made it. He did it this time. It's a green space, it's a pass. Finally, um, and what do we get? Pass means, yep, we complete this adventure. So let's place um, one of our team tokens here. We draw two secret cards and then we get dismissed. Great work, Kit. You did it. This one gets discarded. Two secrets. We get two lith tests. We'll have a look at those on our next turn. Kit should be dismissed. Let's 
grab a challenge card. It's a blue dome. And we'll place him just here. Finally, we have Kerry Silvertip here taking an adventure in the ancient labyrinth. Let's draw a card. It is Head of the Castle. The castle needs a new lord, and as a living being, it will choose one for itself. This is a seven respect test. We get plus one to our respect because we're in the right age. We don't get either of these bonuses, so our respect is seven. The test is seven. Defender attacker is better by zero. Let's grab a challenge card. Attacker is better by zero. Yeah, we pass. Excellent. Good work. Let's move this on to the final place. The good news now is that all of our characters in the Ancient Age will get plus one hit. And that's pretty good for, for the white team. Although we've only got... Um, who's it? Jade is the other Ancient character. All right, now we, um, so we've done this part. We draw two secrets and then we get dismissed. And we're gonna grab two secrets for Kiri. And they are Horseman's Mace and the Pan Galactic Almanac. Hey, that's pretty cool. And she's going to get dismissed to an orange dome. Okay. I think we're going to head down. Here or here. Let's go here. Might be able to cause some trouble. That's it for now then. Join me next time as the black team begins round four.